Hi everybody. We've got a short little uh, Stata tutorial on dealing with dummy variables. So how to create dummy variables, kind of a, a difficult way and an easier way. We'll look at a couple different commands uh, and then real quick a little refresher on how to interpret dummy variable coefficients. So to get started, uh, as always, we need a little data set to work with. Um, and in this example, I'm going to use the housing price data set from the Wooldridge textbook. Uh, that is accessible through the bcu's uh, addu file command. So if you haven't done this already, this is a great little uh, file to, uh, to download. So you're going to type in ssc install bcu's. I've already got it installed, but that's what you'll do. Uh, and so this is the Boston College uh, website where they, uh, they kind of host the data files that go along with this uh, excellent textbook. Uh, and that allows us to now call up those uh, those files that we need um, to run little examples, uh, etc., to, to work along with that textbook. So in this case, we're going to use the command bc use h price one. So, uh -huh. sorry, h price one. There we go. Uh, so this is a data file, a cross-sectional data set of. Uh, prices, selling prices of different homes, uh, and then we have the characteristics of those homes. So we're going to run a little example regression here. And uh, in this case, if you look at the, the variable names here, so our dependent variable would be price. Uh, we have the assessed value, the number of bedrooms, the lot size, and square footage, the square footage of the house itself, uh, a dummy variable for whether or not the house is a colonial style or not, and then we have some log transformations here. Um, so we already have a dummy variable created here, but let's imagine we're in a case where we need to create our own binary indicator dummy variable, uh, which is how life uh, usually works. Uh, so for example here, let's imagine we want to create a dummy variable that takes on the value 1 when a house has a lot size above the average. Right? So we're going to turn a continuous variable into a dummy variable uh, to control for that lot size. Typically you wouldn't do this. You'd want to maintain all that granular information uh, in a continuous variable. But imagine that's that's the task ahead of us. So we can apply these uh, these commands to a lot of different scenarios. So kind of the the most straightforward way to do this uh, would be the, the two command, the sequential commands. Uh, so imagine we're going to generate a variable, let's call it L size dummy. Right? Uh, again, that's going to take on a value 1 for those houses that are larger than average. Well, I guess before we need to, before we can do that, we need to figure out what is the average size. So let's summarize that lot size variable. So we have the sample mean here of 9,019.84 feet. So anything above that will take on a value 1. Anything below that, we want to have a value 0. So let's go back to that command. Let's generate this L size dummy. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, and we'll create this variable such that every observation is equal to 0. And then all we have to do is replace all the zeros. So replace the value of L size dummy equal to 1 if our treatment condition is met. So if lot size itself is greater than its mean, which we can just plug in the, the value, the 9019.864 to be precise. Right? So it looks like only 18 of our 88 houses are, are above that sample mean. Uh, and just to make sure this looks like uh, we expect it to, right? we, can, we can browse the variables of interest, the lot size, and now our new dummy variable, and make sure this squares up. So the first house has a lot size below the mean, it gets a zero. The second house above the mean, it gets a one. All these houses are below the mean. Here's a one uh, higher than the mean, it gets the value one. So that definitely did the job, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with creating a dummy variable like that. However, uh, if you're going to be doing this a lot, uh, there's an, another command uh, that Stata has got a built in to create variables of this type. And kind of the general command looks something like this. So it's again a 
a variation on this generate statement. So generate the name of the new variable equals, and then just simply in parentheses, you put in the mathematical condition that defines your treatment effect. The condition under which you want to see a value one in your sample. So a lot of times this is gonna be really useful in a geography-based dummy variables. Uh, for example, if we're trying to control for which uh, Federal Reserve District uh, a bank is in, for example, uh, and we want to create a variable that's equal to one if an institution is in the 12th district, so we might generate a new variable, call it D12, equal to, in parentheses, the conditions that define that treatment. District equal equal 12. So that'll give us the zeros and the ones. So let's apply that now to our case here. So let's get rid of our dummy variable that we just created. It was perfectly fine, but just to refresh the, uh, the data set here. So generate, same thing, L size dummy equals, and then in parentheses, we don't even need to say if, we just say the condition, so lot size greater than its mean, the 9,019.864, end parenthesis. And there we have it. And let's, once again, always, always double check. Uh, let's browse that data again. And there we have exactly what we had before. But in 50% of the workload. We only needed one command to do it. So again, if you're going to be doing this uh, sequentially with a bunch of different statements, this is going to be a more efficient way to do it. So now, real quick, let's go ahead and throw that dummy variable into our regression. And let's go ahead and run a regression where, again, we're predicting house price in this example. And let's control for, say, the number of bedrooms in the house. And then let's put in this uh, newly created lot size dummy variable and we run our regression here so our coefficient on bedrooms right that's the marginal effect so every bedroom added holding lot size constant uh, will add fifty six thousand dollars to the price of the house the question now is how do we interpret that dummy coefficient? Right? So that's no longer a slope term or a marginal effect. So we always think of that as the intercept shifting effect. Right? So the visual, right, if we're plotting predicted price versus bedrooms, kind of our baseline regression, well, that's gonna be the control group regression. So the value of zero for our lot size dummy and the slope of that line, right, is gonna be our marginal effect, the effect of bedrooms on price. And then our baseline intercept, right? Well, that's our estimated B0 hat, the constant estimated in Stata here. And then the effect of that dummy variable, in this case, with a positive coefficient of 113, means we're gonna be shifting that baseline predicted value upwards when we compare the treatment versus the control group. So houses that are above the mean in lot size are predicted to have a price $113,000 more holding bedrooms constant, right? Versus that control group, the below the mean. And so the gap, the vertical gap between those uh, two prediction lines, right? Well, that's gonna be the estimated dummy coefficient. So there you have it, an easy way to uh, create a dummy variable and then a nice little reminder of, of how to interpret those coefficients. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I will See you guys next time. Thank you.